Sylvia Robot. Blah, blah, blah. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my final wrap up for December 2021. I read a total of 20 books this month. If you are interested in the other 15 books that I read this month, I will leave those wrap ups down below when I talk about them, but without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about is Gallant by V.E. Schwab, and I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. This is her newest release that is actually releasing in 2022. I was just lucky enough to receive an e-arc of this from HCC Frenzy, so thank you so much to them, but I actually really enjoyed this. This follows Olivia Pryor, who was left on the doorstep of Mary Lance School for Girls when she was very young with nothing but her mother's old journal in her hands. She's never felt like she belonged there, and she's always secretly wished that there was somebody out there wanting her to come home. Then she receives a mysterious letter from an uncle that she never knew existed telling her to come home to Gallant, but her mother has always warned her in this journal that she should never return there. When Olivia arrives at Gallant, she feels that nobody really wants her there, except maybe the ghouls who come out of the walls and seem to follow her everywhere she turns. Olivia is convinced that Gallant is hiding secrets and when she crosses a crumbling wall in the garden she discovers a replica of Gallant that houses death himself who wants out and it's like the story of that. I became engrossed in this story and these characters right from the very first page. I thought Olivia was such an interesting main character. She never speaks but she is so expressive and able to get her thoughts across in other ways. I also really liked the supporting characters of Hannah and Edgar. I thought they were so supportive and just accepted Olivia straight into the house right away. I think that the overall spooky vibe vibes of this story were so well done and I loved immersing myself into the mystery of the two gallants. I found the ghouls to be the most interesting part of the story. I was definitely very intrigued by them and I wish that we got more information on them but I get the whole reason behind why we didn't. I did end up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars because I felt that the ending was very abrupt. I was definitely left wanting more from the story and I don't know if it's because I had a e-arc that it wasn't like the entire story flushed out or if that actually is the ending but I like I said just wanted more. But I do definitely think that this is like the perfect perfect read for October time or like fall vibes. It was just a lot of fun, 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is The Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This is a graphic novel that follows conjoined twins named Jane and Isabel. They were sold to the circus at the age of 3. At one of their shows, they are approached by a doctor who claims that he would be able to perform a surgery that would would separate them and allow them to live separately from one another. When they go through with this surgery, Isabel wakes up alone and is told that Jane has died, but her presence still lingers and it's the story of that. I did really enjoy the carnival circus setting of this. I think that the art style was really well done for the story and I did really enjoy the bright colors that went along with the story, but I don't think that there was enough of a backbone to this story to really connect with any of the characters, which was disappointing. It was a very quick and easy read. I think I read it in like an hour and I did have fun while I was reading it, but I don't think that it was anything particularly memorable so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. For centuries the witches of the land have used their powers to help control the ever-changing climate. The power that a witch possesses is tied to the season that they were born in and while the seasons change the witches powers either strengthen or weaken. When the atmosphere begins to fight back and the climate it becomes unpredictable. People begin to turn to Clara, the first ever witch in a hundred years, for help. 
Being an Everwitch means that Clara's powers never weaken with the changing of the seasons. She is strong during all four of them. This makes her the most powerful witch alive, but Clara does not want to help and she continues to fight her magic while the memories of the people she has hurt by accident with these powers are always on the forefront of her mind and it's like the story of that. I really enjoyed this. I gave it a four out of five stars. I really liked the magic system and I was so intrigued by how unique it was and I was so invested in learning more as the story progressed. I really loved how the story was broken up into the seasons and each section was during that time. I think that it was a great way to show the different ways that Clara changed throughout these seasons. I will say that Clara was annoying to me for a good portion of this book. She was just so self-pitying and it just got old really quickly. But I do think that it is understandable because she must have felt such immense pressure and helplessness in the situation she was put in. I did like the romance. I liked how we got to see Clara learn to trust her magic and become more confident in her ability to control it while she got closer to Song. I loved the character development of Clara. I really enjoyed watching her learn to accept herself and her magic and no longer feel the need to hide herself away from others. I also really liked that the underlying message of this this was climate change and the danger that our planet is in if we don't make these necessary changes now. I liked how that message was brought across in a way that was not preachy and it did get the point across in a beautiful way. Overall, I think that this was a wonderful character-driven story and I am just happy that I get to keep it on my shelf because it is beautiful underneath and I was very worried that I would have to get rid of it if I rated it three stars or less, but now it gets to stay and I'm very excited about it. Next up is Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. This follows Sasha, whose best friend Xavier gets back with his ex-girlfriend Ivy. So Sasha takes it upon herself to protect Xavier by posing as a male online to draw Ivy in and get her to cheat once again. But then something very bad happens and Sasha needs to figure out how to cover that up before people start to find out and it's like the story of that. I liked this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I honestly thought that it was probably going to be a three-star read but I was hooked into this right from the very beginning. I ended up reading it in one sitting. The writing style is just so easy to get drawn into. I cannot say that I necessarily liked any of the characters but I did like the drama. Sasha was very annoying. I could not stand the bad decisions that she made. They just made no sense to me. Xavier also annoyed the living hell out of me just because he followed Ivy around like a little lost puppy dog even though she was so manipulative and awful towards him. And then Ivy was your typical mean girl. She didn't really seem to have any other personality trait other than bitchy. I did end up giving it four stars because I genuinely enjoyed my time reading it. It and I did not see the ending twist coming at all so I was actually surprised at it which does not happen often so four out of five stars for me. And then the final book that I have is Displacement by Kiku Hughes and I give this 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Kiku who is on vacation with her mother in San Francisco when she finds herself displaced to the Japanese American internment camps in the 1940s where her grandmother was held during World War II. These displacements happen a few times before Kiku finds herself stuck in the past, never truly knowing when she will be able to return home. I really enjoyed the art style and bright colors in this. I think it really drew me in to the story. I also really like how much this graphic novel actually taught me about a history that I honestly did not know that much about. I read this in one sitting and I really liked how much information was packed into this in a way that that did not feel preachy at all. I really liked Kiku as a narrator and the emotional impact that she did have on me in such a short period of time. I also really liked how the ending involved Kiku and her mother fighting the injustices of today. I think that it was a great message and I do think that a lot of people should pick up this book to learn the history that is not often talked about anymore. 
But yeah, I gave it a 3.5. I thought it was a very informative and interesting graphic novel. All right, everybody. So those were the final books that I read for December 2021. If you are interested in the other 15 books that I read for this month, I will leave those wrap-ups down below for you guys to check out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!